Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to that time of the evening. This is the main event of the evening. Six rounds in a super bantamweight contest. Your referee in charge of the action, Paul McCullough. Your timekeeper, Alex McKenzie. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is sanctioned by the Boxing Union of Ireland. Supervisor ringside in charge, Mel Crystal. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials are ringside and they are ready. The fighters are in the ring and they are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, for the final time, it's about to go down. If you are ready to see some action, make some noise. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, officially weighing in at 54.2 kilos. Tonight, making his 33rd professional appearance inside the ring, wearing red and gold shorts. From Colombia, please welcome Yin Casino. And now introducing his opponent across the ring in the red corner, officially weighing in at 54.15 kilos. He brings to the ring a professional record of one and zero. Oh. Tonight, wearing green, white, and gold shorts, the fighting pride of Offaly, Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Paul. The Boxer Ludo! And it is main event time, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we're here now, and uh, something tells me Paul Lunum has a little bit of a following. <laughs> the crowd in here. It was the same on his debut a couple of months back. The, the octaves just went through the roof when he got into the ring. I'm on an exceptional debut he made. Absolutely, I uh, was privy to ringside that night, thank God. And here we go. Yeah, he, he fought a uh, veteran, Stefan Nicolai, and God, he made it look easy. You know, six round on his debut. He's in another six round there here. Looked like he could have done 10. But he's in with a crafty one again tonight in Ying Sacedo. Uh, the guy who we saw try to use some dirty tactics in his previous fight here, I believe it was Ken Lewis. Um, he went out just a month later and he got a win against a debutant in the UK. And then we used some sneaky tactics there in that he weighed in two and a half kilos over what I believe is the agreed weight and he knocked out the opponent. He'd be doing well, I think, tonight to land a punch on Paul Lunham. Yeah, that has to be acknowledged. The pace in which Paul fights at is quite high and even had a good conversation with his team yesterday and the guys from Unit 3, obviously a stable mate, Gary Cully, and the ethos of what they're creating out in that gym is uh, fantastic. Yeah, no, uh, Noel Barrett out in Unit 3, you know, they, they develop engines on these fighters that are just second to none. You'd have to argue they're probably one of the hardest working gyms around. Absolutely. And Lumen always, like, he makes the weight easy, he always looks healthy and strong at the weight. You know, but there is, there is an element of uh, wildness just to say though that, you know, Luna will just have to stay switched on. Gets caught there on the way in. A little bit of an acknowledgement there now from Casero. Yeah, you know, um, no disrespect to Kane Lewis, but this is a different level tonight with Casero. You know, you've elite champion, under 22 champion, he's won the European bronze medal. You know, and Paul's still only, what, 23? And as we spoke in the previous part, speaking about a fighter who lives the life. Yeah, no, this, this is it. Um, straight in there, the feet and hands are, you know, the mesmerizing. But again, you don't want to be on the end of one of those wild swings. No, like you said, just needs to stay on now for these six, or however long it may last. You know, there's not many fighters who uh, will do two six rounds. They'll be main eventing in their second fight. They'll be bringing a big crowd. They'll be getting walked to the ring by, you know, a record label signed music group. As he unloads a couple of shots there in Casado on the ropes. A little bit of a nod of the head from Casado, but I think he felt those. Back, 
Lovely hook there from Paul, as to say, that was coming in. We're into round two now of a scheduled six here for our main event. Referee chastising Casado's corner for it being a little bit too slow. Getting out. Yeah, my straight back at it at a million miles an hour for the Offaly's Paul Lewin. I believe the fourth professional boxer from Offaly. Well, when he fights, you'd think the, the whole county of Offaly is here with him. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure there's plenty of guys listening to us at home here. You know, we'd be chasing down titles from what I've heard in the very, very near future. Big shots there now from Paul. As Lunam turns Caicedo there now. I feel like as Caicedo comes rushing in, he's leaving himself quite open for those shots from Paul. Yeah, a very, a very crafty counter puncher when he needs to be, but he can also go on the front for it as we're seeing. You know, when he's using tactics, he's, he's spinning so sad, though, and he's just not letting him settle. We see, uh, we see Paul's corner using the stopwatch just so they know exactly where they are in the round. You know, we hear the instructions coming in. He's following those instructions to the T. And as I was speaking to those guys yesterday, they, they <laughs> as Paul does a fantastic switch and move to get out of, the, out of any bit of danger there. Uh, as I was speaking to his team yesterday, whatever, they're meticulous approach and everything you do, you know, um, stands to them when it comes to showtime. Yeah, no, there's no um, there's no half measures here. And you know that's important and that we, we know I think it's uh Jared Hughes is, is challenging Rudolph Farrell in Belfast next week for the BY Celtic title at Paul's way. You know, he's already done a six rounder, he gets this win tonight. Is he gonna already be calling for that? I mean he's more than capable for those level of fights, I believe, at the moment. And even as you mentioned about those domestic fights, although it's maybe only a second professional fight, or whatever, his caliber of a boxer because of his amateur pedigree will obviously be through the roof. Yeah, no, it certainly is. Look, you, you're picking up medals at European competitions. I mean, and like a lot of people would say, the hardest thing about boxing for Team Ireland is winning the competition in Ireland. You know, he's he won them multiple times. A bit of a slip there. Another excellent round. And here we go now, round three, getting to the halfway point of our main event. There's a, almost an, an erratic, controlled nature to the fight when you, when you watch Paul fight. He's moving at such speed, but it's controlled. It, it, it is very impressive, you know. There's another one of those shots again as Caicedo comes in. He's getting tagged. You can hear Paul's corner calling for patience. Yeah, you know, he, he got caught there and then immediately landed one back just to let, so I say, I don't know. I was just about to say, it seemed like it was punch for punch. <laughs> you know, that's probably the first meaningful punch he's been caught with in, in the two fights of his career so far. But again, we see, so I said, a punch in the back of the head there. These are the tactics we've seen him employ in the last fight against Kane Lewis. Like if he's getting no success, he'll make it a rough and ready kind of... Yeah, he will. He'll make it as uncomfortable as he can, especially if he knows, look, I'm not going to win this one, but you're going to remember. And 
the pace in which uh, Paul fights at is, is through the roof. It is indeed. And we're hearing clear, concise instructions from his corner. And again, we see Saucedo, you know, kind of sneaking those back of the head punches in there. Paul will just have to stay a little bit more switched on for them. Looks like Saucedo's coming forward now. He's trying to get into Paul's face, ask a few questions of him. I'm just using the jab. Use that little bit of technical ability to slow things down. Head movement is phenomenal. There we go. The simple stuff. Just keep it working. But be careful. As I said, I was throwing a couple of big shots. You know, he as he misses with one there. Yeah, he swings and misses. I feel like when he comes rushing in, though, he's in, he's in danger of the counter punching from Paul. He is, and he's getting caught with little jabs there. <laughs> you need to have a, a bit of an engine on a strong set of legs to keep up with this guy. Absolutely. So Saito's, he's not phased though, he's a tough individual, he'd love to stand there and just fight. As he, he waves uh, Paul into him there now, but it's more important that he just sticks him to his own game plan. As we move into it, round four of a schedule of six here in our main event. from the nose of Saucedo there, I've seen him wiping it in between rounds. It's those, uh, those kind of stiff jabs that Lunum has been landing. And any of those shots as well as he's been coming in. It's kind of pawing at his nose now, are you? Yeah, you can see that the blood's gonna start and I, I'm sure Lunum is gonna notice that and target that. Out guard stoppage there for Paul Lunum. Straight back to it. Stiff jab to the body from Paul. The pace in which this fight has been fought at, the referee has to make sure he's on his bike also. Yeah, the constant turning. He has to keep getting out of the way as well. <laughs> yeah, we see Lunum's corner have noticed that uh, Sarsado has a tendency to switch his stances now when he's just trying to get a little bit out of range. And they're employing tactics to, to walk around that. It's a lovely hook from Paul where he gets his head off the line as he throws it as well. So he's, he's in the safe zone for that and fire back. Yeah, and we're seeing again just there. We can see a little bit more blood now coming from the nose of Saucedo. It's, uh, it's on Paul Lunum's head. I had a double take there to make sure that Paul wasn't cut. But he effectively hasn't really been touched so far. To be fair to our uh, Colombian opponent, he's, he's letting his hands go when he can. You know, the same dirty, he, he wants to have a row. So his fast feet of paws keeping him out of distance and out of danger. Yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's usually said, you know, there's levels to this game and we're seeing them in there tonight. You know, there's, there's a couple of level difference between uh, Ian Sosedo and, and Paul Luna. But 
these are all tests he has to pass, you know. Uh, nobody has the right to go to the top of the mountain straight away. Absolutely, 100%. Second last round now of the Schedule 6 for our main event. Leon him straight out, snappy jab. Um, he hasn't really missed a step, he, he's not slowing down. <laughs> Lovely right hand. A nod of acknowledgement from Caicedo. Some active instructions coming from the Leonum corner. And you can see Paul acknowledging them, implementing them. Moving with his feet and fainting as well to try and get a reaction out of Caicedo. Yeah, you alluded to it in the previous round. He keeps his head off the line. You know, he, he, he's not there to be here. You know, and I think so I said it was swinging to where he hopes Paul is going to be rather than where he thinks he is. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, you know, we're seeing those wild shots and the blood trickling down. As I said, I was getting slightly frustrated here, you know. And as we've mentioned, a couple of opponents here tonight. I mean, Paul Luminan is a, is a puzzle in himself with the pace he sets and obviously the, the class act of a fighter he is. Yeah, no, a lot of these away opponents have guys levels that they're used to surviving at. Paul is above that. And it makes it a difficult night walk, night walk for them too. You know, when you see the erratic nature here, you know, Sosedo is losing the head a little bit. Yeah, he's trying to make it a bit dirty or whatever because he, he, he doesn't have the capacity to, to be on Paul's level. Yeah, he's not going to be able to match a punch for a punch or like footwork. But Paul needs to not get drawn into that and he, he's done a good job so far of, you know, staying on the outside. Calls from his corner to make sure he stays moving, stay dancing, as they put it. Yeah, you know, so I say though, it's just he's, he's doing that rough and tumble type thing here. That in itself is a test for Paul to pass, you know, and so far he's handling it well. We see, so I say though, his, his legs have gone now, I think. He's you know, tongue out, golding him in, yeah. He's trying to go with Loon him in. <laughs> As we move into our final round of our main event here on JB Promotions, I'd just like to make everyone aware that we will be back on October 4th with Make or Break live on pay-per-view with JB Promotions live from the warehouse here at the Red Cow. Yeah, that's the fifth show of 2024, and uh, I've no doubt we're going to see some interesting matchups on that one. You know, potentially the last one of the year. There'll be guys trying to stamp their name there. Trying to secure big fights for early 2025, or we may see some Celtic title fights when we're back here in October. My fingers crossed, and I look forward to it. You know, we, we've speculated on a few tonight. We've uh, mentioned the potential five versus five, you know, JB Promotions versus, uh, you know, Ian Gochran's boxing crew. There's plenty of matches to be made out there. You know, we saw Shane McConnell tonight. Potential fight with Peter Carr, who we also saw tonight, you know. Carr passed a big test against Granham. McConnell got a savage KO, the only one of the night. As you can see here, Kaiseido now is he's getting a bit uh, frustrated and a bit irritated with the referee and the way the fight is going. He certainly is, but he's landed one or two shots there, you know. 
reminding Paul Young to just stay switched on, which he's done a good job of doing. Look, lovely turn. You know, we, uh, Paul has been asked some different questions tonight. Yeah. He's, uh, he's passed this test again, or he hopefully will in the next minute or so. You know, he's landed some big shots himself. He's even took a couple of shots. And I'm sure you'll see Paul, obviously, if not on a JP Promotion cards, one of those big cars that are coming to the Tree Arena or, or the one of those domestic cars maybe in Northern Ireland over the next couple of six months to a year. Yeah, no, there's, there's plenty of opportunities, you know, boxing is uh, doing well at the moment. Hopefully we see him back here. But I've no doubt there'll be other promoters and matchmakers looking at Paul. I'm not really sure what happened there. Uh. A little bit of a shovel match. We see that kind of change of gears from Paul. You know, in the sixth round, he still has that burst of acceleration. Some nice speed and getting in and out. And even following instructions from his corner, they were looking for two or three steps back all time. Oh. Nice stiff right hand, catches Sasaito off guard there. Oh, he, he indicates that it didn't hurt him anyway. Very, very, very dominant there. performance. That's all from us, folks. Um, we'll see you again in October. Thank you very much for everyone for tuning in. <laughs> Ladies and gents, let's hear it for both boxers. They finished off the show in style for us. At the sixth great round of professional boxing, we once again go to Paul McCullough's scorecards. Paul scores about 59 to 55, declaring your winner, Paul Lee.